Welcome back. Well, we are cat free today, mostly because I have no idea where the little bad cat has gone. I, I actually thought he was in the bedroom on the bed. I went and took a look and he's not there, but every once in a while, I don't know why, he'll crawl under the bed to take his nap. I used to think he did that just to screw with me. It's like, yeah, she's not going to crawl under here and find me. I don't know why. Uh, he does it sometimes in the winter, sometimes in the summer, so it's not even seasonal. So, yeah, he's just disappeared. Maybe he will come out again. Maybe he won't. So I guess we're just going to have to take it uh, we'll take a little of what we got. No, actually, you know, I was going to say we'd have to take what we got from yesterday and use that for today, but we don't because I had forgotten. I have a closing slideshow of Audie. So if he doesn't come out, that's what we'll play at the end of this video. All right. When we come back, we are going to do a little follow up on yesterday and our talk about 2020 and what that did to, you know, scramble our brains. So, when we come back. So there were a couple of comments from yesterday's video bringing up a subject that I hadn't dealt with, and that was the government intervention in our lives in 2020. Now, some of us have a very high threshold for government involvement in our lives. Others have a very low threshold. I... I will be honest with you, I am one of those people with a really, really low threshold for the government meddling in my life. The way I figure it, if I'm not breaking any laws, the government should leave me alone. It's that simple. Uh, the government doesn't always agree with me, and certainly they didn't in 2020. But we were facing uh, a world in which the government could shut down businesses, and they did, and they did. They could keep us from visiting friends, relatives, and they did. They could keep us from traveling across state lines, and they did. They could force us to cover our face with cloth. Not even surgical masks, because believe me, I saw people pulling their turtleneck sweaters up over their nose and mouth, and people were fine with that. I saw people running around with bandanas, you know, like stagecoach robbers. They were fine with that. And the government was saying, yeah, you have to do this. Well, yeah, that's a pretty high level of government interference with our lives. And that alone even without any of the other complications going on in 2020, would be more than enough to create anxiety and and some low-grade irritation, well, maybe high-grade irritation, for many people. It was a socio-political upset that we had not been used to. And when I say we, I'm, I'm talking about all of us, not just my generation. And I do think that as a baby boomer, I was probably the last generation that was really born into a free society. Because up until the time that I was an adult, in fact, even in my early adult years, having a, a positive identification, a photo ID, was not necessary. Uh, I cannot remember when I got, I think my first photo ID was from something like 1980, and I was in my mid-20s then, uh, because I don't drive. 
Everybody has photo IDs when they drive, but I had to get a photo ID specifically to be able to identify myself, to prove who I was, which is something didn't have to be done before. Neither one of my grandmothers had photo IDs. Neither one of them drove. Uh, my I, One grandmother had been a housewife on a farm her whole life, and the other was in a big city. She was very involved in politics. She was a nurse. She she had a, a, a life that was very integrated into society. She was not a farm wife out in the boonies. Never had a photo ID. Never needed one. She did not need to prove who she was to anyone. So in that context, I really have to say mine was the last freeborn generation. Um, I didn't No, I had a social security number. Um, my mother's mother never had one, didn't need one because she died before it was necessary to use a social security number on your tax forms. I got my social security number, I think at 14 or 15. Nowadays they are issuing them to babies. So yeah. I, I would put forth that I was the last freeborn generation, the baby boomers. Everyone else has come in to the system and has been tagged and identified by the system virtually from birth. So for those of us my age, looking at the government coming in as they did in 2020 saying we can shut down all of the businesses we can tell you when and where you can go to the store we can tell you whether or not you can walk out of your front door in fact someone had said that that new york city is virtually under martial law for uh, 22 years now and i see much of what happened in 2020 as martial law minus National Guard troops on our streets, because we did not have that here. I will say that much. But did we have martial law? Well, if someone can prohibit you from leaving your home, if someone can say to you, you cannot walk down the street without covering your face with a piece of cloth, you know, not, we're not even talking anything scientific, like a legitimate mask. Just put a piece of cloth over your face, jump through our hoop, and we'll let you out of your house. That's scary. People couldn't visit their friends and family. People were, people couldn't get on planes and fly. You could not go into the hospital and have elective surgery. And mind you, there's a whole lot of stuff that they were considering elective surgery that I would not consider elective surgery. Um, and let me just give you an example. I'll give you one of my own rather than disclose anybody else's medical information. But I had had my right knee replaced shortly before that it was in 2019. I needed to get the left one done too. Knee replacement surgery was considered elective. It's like, I always thought elective surgery was like a nose job or something. Nope, nope. The extent to which we were controlled was scary. And some of us have a much higher threshold for that sort of thing than others. Admittedly, I am low threshold on government interference. But it was an added stress in our lives. It was something that led many of us to question what was really going on in Washington. Certainly some of us walked away from that whole experience very paranoid. And keep in mind, we're not even getting in to vaccinations yet. Well, we're not gonna get into it in, in this episode what's going on about vaccinations. But we didn't get there. 
just what could we do? What could we not do? How the government was just controlling us. That was a huge factor for people. And so that's one I do want to throw out, mostly because I want part of what we do here on this channel. And those of you who went through lockdown with me know this. The comments section is where we build community. That's where we forge our community. So this is where you can just sit there with your phone or your iPad or your computer. And just tell us the story of your life and we will listen and we will listen without judgment or recrimination. So if you have things you want to spit out about what was going on vis-a-vis -vis the government control of your life, you got a comment section you can do it in. So what I was really hoping to do today was to talk about uh, what happens after you have taken a little assessment test, or you don't even need to take a test. What happens when you recognize you might have a problem and you want to take the next step? How do you find that next step? How do you find the therapist? So I'm just going to give you a, just a very quick thumbnail overview of all of your options out there. And you've got plenty. Uh, you have psychiatrists. A psychiatrist is a medical doctor whose subspecialty is psychiatry. Uh, a psychiatrist can prescribe medication. You know, the drugs you see advertised on television to lighten your mood or whatever. You know, anti-anxiety drugs. You want Xanax? You need a psychiatrist for that. Now, keep in mind, any doctor can do this. But within the field of treating mental illness, it's going to be the psychiatrist who is going to write those prescriptions. So a psychiatrist is a medical doctor who deals with illness of the mind. Then you have a psychologist. A psychologist can also be a doctor. But they, they will have a PhD in psychology. Now keep in mind, in many areas, you do not have to have the PhD in psychology to call yourself a psychologist. In general, you will need at least a master's degree to say, I am a psychologist and I wish to open a practice. They are not going to be writing you prescriptions but in many other ways, they are functioning the same way a psychiatrist does. Then you have what I mentioned yesterday, clinical social workers. These are people who are coming from a completely different arena. The social workers tend to be more practical and tend to focus more on problem solving, more uh, behavioral oriented. Uh, they will need a master's degree in social work if they do third-party billing. In other words, if your medical insurance pays for it, they're going to need at least a master's degree in social work for this. But is this an option? Absolutely. And then we have the realm of what I'm going to call therapists. These are people uh, who are counselors, therapists, and different states regulate these professions differently. Some states do not regulate them at all. Anybody can put out a shingle and say, I am a counselor, I am a therapist. Uh, very often they will come from college programs um, where they have studied counseling techniques, therapeutic techniques, and you then have uh, nurses. By the way, these are not in, in any specific order. So I'm not saying that a random counselor is more qualified than a nurse or a psychiatrist is more qualified than a psychologist. That's just consider it random order. Nurses. Nurses can provide therapy as well. And if they have sufficient educational qualification, they too can get third-party payments. And when you are looking 
for a mental health professional, what you're going to want to do initially is try to figure out what mental health professional you want. Do you feel you would do well with a, a counselor, a therapist, someone to just talk to? Do you think you might want to look at mood-altering drugs? Do you think you might want to get into the issues from your early childhood? Do you feel you are in great crisis now and need to start actively digging your way out of this? So, digging your way out of this, you're going to want a social worker. If you want to get into your childhood trauma, you're going to want a psychiatrist or a psychologist. If you feel you would do well with mood-altering drugs, you're going to need the psychiatrist. So that's why I'm giving you these options. However, now you know my thinking on transparency. I'm not going to hold back information. One of the things I learned, and I learned this a long time, I learned this as an undergrad in college, in psychology courses I took. They have done studies. Oh, uh, by the way, I, I uh, quickly did a scan on the internet to see if I could find copies of any of these studies. I'm going to have to look for them because, again, they're old, undergrad, uh, you know, and I'm looking at 70 now, so you imagine how old they are. They've done studies that showed that people with minor to moderate psychological issues did just as well after six months talking to a sympathetic friend as they did in therapy. There you go. So keep that in mind. That is out there, and that is not to say that therapy is worthless. One of the reasons I can rattle off all those various kinds of therapists is because I have seen every last one of them myself. And I do go into therapy periodically. I have done this my entire adult life. Even if I don't really have a reason to do it, I will go in just for a mental health wellness check every now and then, because when I say my family was dysfunctional, oh, I'm not joking. I come from, gosh, I come from a line of complete maniacs. And when that's the way you were raised, when you've got it environmentally and you've got it genetically, it would behoove you to occasionally just check in and make sure that your ducks are all in a row. And that's what I do. And as I mentioned yesterday, I've got an appointment with a therapist coming up in a week. I think it's a week. So I've seen all kinds of professionals. And I, I don't actually have a preference in general. But if I have a certain kind of issue, I am more inclined to go to a certain kind of professional. It's just that simple. Generally speaking, I don't go in because I have issues. I go in just, you know, for that reassurance that I'm not as crazy as the rest of my family. You know, as long as I get that, I'm fine. But it's something that is out there. It's like a, a smorgasbord. You can find whatever you're looking for. Uh, take a look at your medical insurance. Most medical insurance plans will pay for some kind of counseling. Once you find a counselor, make sure that they are licensed and qualified, because as I say, some states do not require this. If your insurance will pay for this person, if they will do insurance billing, it's often called third-party billing. If they will do third-party billing, they have to be qualified, because your insurance is not going to pay for, you know, whatever, you know, uh, uh, an astrologer to provide you with therapy. It's not going to happen. So that is some measure of assurance that you're getting a qualified professional. If you have friends or relatives who have gone to a therapist, they might be able to give you recommendations. You might not even need the same therapist they went to. You can probably just go into 
the large office and get a different therapist there. All of these things are options. But you should start off by asking yourself, what do I need? Where do I see this going? Do I just need a little bit of bolstering to get out of my slump? Do I think maybe it's about time I started talking about my wildly dysfunctional childhood? You know, are there things that I've been just bottling up that maybe I, I want to look at long-term therapy? Am I sufficiently unhappy with the way things are going that I'm willing to make a commitment to go in once a week and talk to someone for an extended period of time? Think about these things and that should help you make your decision about the kind of help you might need. But in the meantime, do not lose sight of that sympathetic friend because we all have friends. We've all got somebody we can talk to and that might really be all you need. And as I say, I'm not saying this to downplay the value of professionals. It's just that the simple fact of the matter is a lot of us can do it without going to a therapist. And, and if your insurance does not cover therapy, it can be costly. It, it can be something that is taking a big chunk out of your disposable income. And I'm keenly aware of that. So keep all of this in mind. Balance it out. Make the decision that's best for you. And in the meantime, remember, you've always got the comment section in this video. If you want to start throwing stuff out, if you are using your own name, don't, don't. You know, we want anonymity here. We don't want anybody just throwing out things that they might not want everybody to know. But remember, we're here for you. Now, before we go, let me very quickly just give you, this is another one of my good heavens, did I ever get a lot flakier than I realized. So I have to tell you the story about how this happened. Uh, Colleen Staver texted me this morning and asked me about a Christmas box she had sent. And I remember the box coming in. I remember Audie sleeping on it and refusing to let me have it. In fact, one day when I said, and this is after like four or five days, he had been sleeping on it. I just said to myself, I'm going to get that box. I reached out and boy, he swatted me. So I haven't found Colleen's box. Clearly, I picked it up and put it somewhere where the cat could continue to enjoy it. I know, I know this is so sad. I grabbed another one that I thought was Colleen's box. It wasn't. Look at this. This is a beautiful Christmas card. It came from one of our viewers, and I had left that box unopened, obviously, for two months without realizing it. Why? Because a cat was sleeping on it. Okay? So, yeah, we are opening some Christmas presents today because, yes, I am just falling pieces here and not even, oh, here, I'm sorry, let me show you the wrapping paper. That's always my favorite part. The beautiful blue plaid. Yeah, I am just not paying enough attention to what's going on. So when I say I know what it's like to be stuck in 2020, I'm not kidding. I know what it's like to be stuck in 2020. And I am quite desperate to get out of this hole I've dug myself in. Let's see if we can get this open. It's soft. Okay. Ooh, it's cloth. This is soft and it's cloth. And it's pretty. This is, this is a pashmina. Is it, do you say pashmina on you? 
Oh, it is. Let's see. Can you see that? Oh, yeah. There we go. Look at this. This is beautiful. Well, thank you. It's two months that's been sitting in a box. And I could have been wearing that because it was winter. More. like stuff here. Oh no, this is not cloth. Oh, I see what this is. This is a doll. Yes, baby, don't. All right. Audie is here with me at my feet because I was opening boxes. So that is a cat's sign to come and make a nuisance of himself. Ooh, look at this. This is so pretty. This is definitely a Chinese doll. Very, very sweet. Let me set you over here. You stay. And we have one more. Once again, we've got our blue paper. And we have a cat who's helping himself to the wrapping paper now. another pashmina. So, total, oh, this is pretty. This is like berry and olive. This is berry and olive. And my living room rug is berry with a lot of olive in it. So I have a feeling I know where this is going to live. This is lovely. Now, read the card. Sue and Audie, I love you both. You don't deserve it. You're still playing with stuff. Um, may the wonders of the season fill your holiday with joy and reflection. Merry Christmas to you both. Uh, and this is from Diane. So, I should have opened that up because there were two gorgeous pashminas that could have been keeping me warm all winter. Instead, they were sitting in a box. Why? Because I am just not tracked in properly and because I was perfectly willing to let a very crazy little cat determine whether or not I open boxes based on where he would like to take his naps. And right now he's, he's having a fine time playing with the papers at my feet. All right, so we had an opportunity to end this video on a happier note. Gorgeous pashminas, beautiful little Chinese doll. Thank you, Diane, that was lovely. And remember, I still have to go out and find Colleen's box, which is here somewhere. Just the problem is I really do have a lot of boxes here. After the problem with the schoolhouse, I have boxes squirreled around everywhere after you know, I was no longer able to keep them out there. So I've also been moving them gradually back into the schoolhouse, um, you know, as the roof and so on is getting fixed. So Colleen's box may well be in the schoolhouse. This is going to be my new adventure. What did I do? with Colleen's Christmas box. All right.
that is what I have for you today. A little help with trying to figure out how to choose your mental health professional and opening the whole can of worms vis-a-vis -vis government interference in our lives in 2020. But I do want to open that up for discussion in, in the video notes. And remember, we need to be kind and polite. Not all of us have the same political views. And everyone is entitled to their own opinion. So let's just agree that we're going to start talking about this because we're not going to heal until we start the discussion. That's always going to be step one. All right, we're going to take a look at a slideshow on the way out. I will see you tonight for those of you who stick around for just chatting. Audie is in fact here, but he did not make it on camera. So we're going to look at a little Audie slideshow. Have a terrific day. Thank you.